So we came here today to talk about uh, application security and how it's changing because of AI. Do you think AI AppSec is something different from AppSec? No, not really. It's more enhancements to it, right? When I think of AI Gen AI, I really think about data and data data protection, data privacy, just moving data from here to there. And then it's also about enhancing the tools that you currently have to make it more efficient on that side. So uh, I think it's just going to get faster and hopefully better uh, when it comes to that side. What do you think? I think it's going to it's going to be a game changer because um, coding is a commoditized business now, yeah. right? So it's become that you need to have the right security posture at the time individuals are writing code. And you want to have the right guardrails to say, look, this code is written and it's got vulnerabilities in it. And before you push it to production and cost you more to fix it, let's catch it earlier. But I think the way coding is changing the game with the vibe coding and the cursors of the world, um, this is going to become more and more important. You said something about your existing tools. What do you think, uh, characteristic wise, your tools need to be able to do now? You know, have already built in in order to handle the way things yeah. are changing. you know new dependencies new places they're being deployed how do they you know need to architecturally be structured features what are you looking for yeah really before it's, it's, it's always faster better more quicker right that whole <laughs> idea, right especially when you're a technology company you live or die by the speed of your releases and so to say okay we're gonna pipeline you're gonna do a review and i'm gonna do this review and then we'll push it to approval and then we'll put the ua dev qa and then eventually throw it out to the production okay well our competitors just did for three releases before world we're doing that so really ideally like Again, cursor, windsor, great examples where you're coding, it'll come up with, it'll complete the sentence for you. Add a security piece to that, that's great, right? You're coding something, hey, you're gonna cause a log jam here, you're gonna cause an issue there, do this instead. And so that's the direction we kind of mo want to move to. I'm, I'm waiting to see that, uh, to see the all the different type of code assist companies to add that feature in there or to have some kind of parity into something like Ender Labs that can kind of feed that information. And then, then now you got your developers, Coming and spinning stuff out right away before it even gets to the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, it's like that real shift left yeah. dream. It's yeah, finally it's possible the dream. to possible. shift it as far left. Like, it doesn't get any further left than that. Right. And and for us, CISO is actually, you know, this is a win for us. And, you know, for developers, this is definitely a win. But for us, it's a big win because we're not waiting to catch the vulnerabilities later in the pipeline. And then going back and causing the developers to redo it, fix it, they get frustrated or annoyed by it. So for us to being able to introduce uh, code and uh, end work to them, this will make them feel better. They'll be able to code faster, get to production faster, and you know less headache on our side too. Yeah, so. you gotta understand that CISOs, we don't write the code. And usually, especially again at tech heavy companies, the coders and the engineers are kind of the geniuses. They're the ones making all the money. So we're just almost like overhead to them. I like to think of us as partners or they're our key customers, but we want them to kind of partner with us and get these things in place. Reminds of the story when we when I first got a SCA SAS DAS tool in the pipeline working with the developers, I got the best compliment I could ever get from a head developer was like, "Hey, this didn't suck as much as I thought it was going to suck, <laughs> right?" And so that to me is the, the best you can do. And now if you're getting a tool that's just spitting a bunch of noise and you're losing all that equity, you got to keep that equity and build on it with something that's going to be elegant and quiet and, and sensical. I think you've both had the experience of pulling out a noisy tool and putting in a new one which, uh, you know, you're in control of things like budget and perhaps ultimately what you choose. But what about the process of rebuilding trust with developers after perhaps they've lost some trust in your organization because that tool is not frictionless? Yeah, you're always in the hole there, yeah. right? So you want to come in swinging with the, the best and then you always want to touch base, make sure, hey, is it working good? Have a champions program. And I get it. If you have, you know, company 70,000 people large, it's tough to tough. do. It's hard to do that. Yeah. Smaller companies easier because you kind of know everybody. Uh, but yeah, you have to do regular check-ins and see how things are going. And if it's not working, you got to be willing to make that change. In my previous life, uh, you know, working for a smaller startups was easier, like uh, Jeremy was mentioning. But for larger organizations, what I ended up doing was I talked to the CTO, uh, engineering leader too, and I said, who are one or two people on the team that have come come along for the ride mm. with me in picking the tool, going through the capabilities, and then when we did a you know the test drive, we just gave it to them. Come back and tell me you hate this product. That's fine. I'm good with it. Like I mean, I'm gonna let you. You're gonna have a big vote in this. It's not like CISO is gonna tell you this is the right tool because it gives me this. If you guys two point, if they don't give good feedback back then, then it's like 
They're like, oh, another C-cell, pick up the tool, putting it down my throat, I got to go use this. So I changed that game a couple in my last two two companies ago, and it's worked well going forward. Yeah. Because they feel like more empowered. They're like, to your point, we're letting them, they're the geniuses, we're letting them tell you what security measures work and don't work, and that feedback goes back to the vendor. So the vendor doesn't look at the CISO and go, like, well, why aren't you buying us? I'm like, well, your primary user is telling you this is not working or working. That's the answer, right? And we're almost facilitating a better outcome for the organization and the company. So our roles are a little different when it comes to something that's impacting developers and engineers. Yeah. So you presumably did that when you implemented Endor Labs. We did. So what did they say? So, I mean, so, uh, you know, my platform guy loved it, right? So, I mean, impressing some platform engineers is hard because yes. they're like, so... Uh, he was, uh, you know, he was locked in. He found the ability to integrate it really fast, being able to use it in terms of giving it to the separate engineering teams. So that has been really good for us. Um, and then, you know, we definitely have stories that, you know, we can always share and like their anecdotal like uh, aha moments that um, I found interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, I think the positive signs across the board. Cool. And I know App Lemon is a little earlier in your journey with Endor. What have you heard so far in terms of feedback from you yeah. know your team, the engineering org? Yeah, it's just a lot cleaner, a lot less noise. You know, it's a problem when uh, you bring on interns who are like, I don't even know. Oh, we have a tool that does that? Yeah, okay, we got a problem here. So let's bring something else in that people are using. And now you're saying, okay, folks are using this now. They like it. It helps them on a day-to-day basis. So uh, it's, it, again, if it's just too much noise, I'm, I'm going to ignore it, right? I, the signal-to-noise ratio, especially in a fast-moving company, has got to be high signal, very low noise. So if you have a security tool, which is, in my realm, that's causing a lot of noise, you got to cut that out as quick yeah. as you can. I think we could almost say that uh, experiences using AI code assistance that in some ways that code that's being produced is quote unquote noise because it doesn't mm. have all of the security best practices. Um, often there's code quality issues. So what are you seeing in terms of, you know, if you think of like the Gartner hype cycle, you know, you get, yeah. I, I, all I remember is the trough of despair or disillusionment yeah. or something. Like where would you say your uh, engineering teams are in terms of their attitude toward these tools? Attitude towards the security tools, uh, it's still it's still getting there, right? What about the code assistance? The code assistance is they love, they love, they love it. They, they love it. They, they yeah, they're leaning it. in. Yeah. yeah, they're all leaning yeah. in. It's almost Absolutely. like if you're not doing it, it's almost you're like we have a fault. list. We have a list, and we actually see which users are actually using it and how much you're using it versus not using it. Okay. And then there's actually a conversation. Please go. We have a weekly engineering leadership meeting. I'm part of it. And it'll be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, can you go talk to your team members or these two? Why are they not adopting the tool? Mm. Like, is are we missing something or like what's going on, right? So there, there's definitely um, a choice by engineers to kind of lean in and uh, really push it ac- across the entire environment. Are you seeing application release velocity increasing in those teams that are yeah. heavy adopters? 100%. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think... Uh, what you're seeing is the folks that they, they use it or lose, you're going to fall behind at yeah. the end of the day, right? And so now you're getting maybe a junior level coder is now coding at a, at a mid to almost senior level uh, because of this assistance. So why wouldn't you use it? Yeah. All right. Last question. Has nothing to do with anything we've talked about so okay. far. We're here in Vegas. Uh, there's all the conferences, all the conversations. Uh, what's something that you've encountered so far that you've been excited about, enjoyed, got you stoked to go back and talk about with your team, What anything. Yeah, I think, you know, being at Black Hat for us is because there's so many vendors and VCs and right now it's in a good space in security. It's pretty hot. A lot of new startups are coming, a lot of buyouts are happening. You could argue whether it's a bubble or not, whether the prices are good or not. Okay, but the point is there's excitement here. There's stuff being developed, there's money, there's smart people are getting funded, doing great things. And so if you're, and I think you and I are kind of in this, but we're lucky enough to work with some of these folks, we could help shape what they're doing. Mm. What I have noticed is a big divide. There's uh, either a really smart AI guy who doesn't know cyber or a really smart cyber guy who doesn't know AI. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in the case of smart cyber guy or AI guy that doesn't know cyber, we've kind of pitched in at some of these places to say, hey, do it this way, make it do this. And also now you have a better product that everyone can use. So very exciting. I hope it's not a bubble that pops, but right now we're in a good spot. There's a lot of, a lot of synergy, a lot of talk, a lot of excitement. A lot of innovation, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Is that similar for you? Yeah, similar. Similar, and the other thing is like uh, re- reconnecting with some of our friends on the East Coast and you know other parts of the U.S. where we don't get to see them as often. I think getting some of these uh, smaller conversations and events has been like, oh, you're using that product? Oh, I'm using this one. 
And then we exchange notes and sometimes like we're like, oh, we should go talk to them about this is the next feature parody that they should be doing. Because we both are already aligned that that's where they should be going. And it's almost like reshaping them together, right? So it's almost like uh, getting a collective units of CISOs just in a conversation, realizing that, hey, we should link up after this and let's go talk to the vendor. And that's that's awesome, right? That's one of the things that uh, that almost is like uh, refreshing. But sometimes we always feel like we're alone on an island back home just trying to solve this on, yeah. on our own. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. It's you're harder. the uh, one of one in your yeah, company, exactly. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's what's kind of nice. Especially if you're reaching out to a, a good VC. Yeah. That, oh, yeah, we have a company, and the best ones are, hey, maybe they were not in our portfolio, but I think that kind of fit with what you need, and you get those intros, and if they're early enough, Series A, what have you, they'll start working with you, uh, and then now you have free work basically being mm -hmm. done for you. You get to shape the product. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, you want it. I wouldn't bet the farm on it, like if it's a critical oh. control, but it's definitely something you want an area you want to grow into. It's nice to partner. I've done that multiple times, and it's worked out well, but... You do got to be careful, right? Yeah. Because they get bought and you're like, oh, now no, what happens? I know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Enjoy Vegas. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks.